Hello everyone and welcome back to CanaryCast. Jacob here. Uh, real sad video today. Um, O'Neill Hernandez leaving for Middlesbrough. Been a brilliant character ever since he's come through the door in uh, in the January of Daniel Farker's first first season. And, and he's always been that player's been so maybe. I remember that Bolton game in, in that January where he was running rings around Bolton in his two sitters. I think that's probably the perfect way we'll, that you can sum O'Neill Hernandez up. But we'll never forget 18-19 season. 43 games, nine goals, 10 assists, even in the Championship, uh, the Premier League even, the following season, he's played, scored one, assisted two, that brilliant solo goal against Manchester United, which won't be forgotten because I think that sums O'Neill up. When he's at his, at his peak and at his prime, he can beat very, very good quality defenders. I'm sure Middlesbrough fans will be will be coming onto this video and watching it, so we'll give a little load out of what he is, but I just wanted to kind of praise O'Neill for what a brilliant character he's been. We've had all the Argos things, the brilliant songs there, the pit on the mirror where he's been mistaken for some random person on <laughs> going on holiday. He's just such a brilliant character and, and he'll be very, very much missed at Norwich because those characters only come across a few times a season, you know, and, and to just have that personality. He obviously loved the club. Obviously, all his Twitter exchanges calling it Ipswich Ip shit, which is... <laughs> he was just such a brilliant character and look forward to seeing him at Barrachi under Warnock because uh, in a direct system, he is a very direct winger. So it, it always kind of went against Daniel Farker's brain whenever he did play, really. But with with, with Warnock, you like to get out to the winger quickly and get balls into the box. I imagine Pete Piazzi will find it very interesting with O'Neill because his crossing sometimes is inconsistent, to say the, to say the least. But um, he'll be a winger that will really cause defenders a problem. The thing with O'Neill, and, and you'll, you'll quickly find this out, Borough fans, is he looks very, very promising because he doesn't know what he's doing with it. <laughs> no, the defenders don't can't contain it. When he's on it, no defender can contain it that I've seen so, uh, so far. It's just his head then sometimes catches up to his body and it's like, oh no, what do I do now? And there's been so many examples of that you can watch. It's so many various clips. It's almost like a, a championship Adama Traore variant where he will just go and batter people. You'll, you can listen to every single uh, Norwich player and say, oh, who's the strongest in the team? And they all say, oh, no, Hernandez. So difficult to knock off the ball. Like I say, very direct on from that left wing. He can play right wing as well. Um, he played right wing back for us a couple of times when we were chasing games and had to go to five at the back and try and get real whip from two forwards on the pitch. He did very well there at times. Again, very direct and just whipping it in on his right peg, which would be interesting to see where, where Warnock plays him. But he's predominantly from the left. does like to cut in. He can use his left. I wouldn't say that's a, a strong point of his. That he, he's, he's equally adaptable on both. He is right-footed and you can clearly see that. The last couple of seasons have been done by injury, really. Even in the Premier League, he, he kind of fell down the stairs, apparently, and, and done, his, done, done a bad injury for him and knocked him out for about three months, unfortunately. Then came back and, and looked positive, like I said, scored the Manchester United goal, which was a brilliant solo goal. We didn't lose the game, but it was a fantastic strike and fully deserved for him because he deserved, because after the, the, the championship season, the 18-19, where 40 games, eight goals, uh, nine goals, 10 assists, he was a key, key part of that. And if you can get him to be fit, he does pick up the niggles of, of the hamstring injuries and a few ankle injuries. He's, he's not injury prone, but he can pick them up along the way. Like you will get two or three injuries a season from him, which will be a week or two, which just sometimes makes him miss three or four games. For that 18, 19 season, like I say, play 40 championship games out of 46. That's pretty good going, to be fair, for a winger who who is very quick. So we'll pick up those, those hamstring injuries and those sort of things. Like I say, once he gets going, he's very, very difficult to stop. His shooting is sporadic, I'll be honest. It, whilst he scored nine goals for us and scored against yourselves when uh, when we when we won and won promotion the first time under Daniel Farker, there were times where you like, don't shoot, oh no, don't shoot. Or sometimes he does delay on the ball, but in he'll carry the ball up the pitch for you. And you will love him. He's such a lovable character. No one at Norwich dislikes him. We all want to wish him the best. Probably should have let him go at like last season where he did not really feature enough I think it was about 20 times, but they're all off the bench pretty much. Uh, zero goals, zero assists. So he does just need to kind of get his career up and running again, which I think Neil Warnock can do. I think it's a character that Warnock will absolutely love and, and really get the best out of. I, I'd love to see him go and smash it up in the in the championship again. I'm, I don't think there's an obligation to buy, so it will just be a loan. He's only got a year left after this, after this on, his, on his contract. And it looks like we've probably uh, got wingers now that will up further ahead of of O'Neill Hernandez who's at 28 prime of his career needs to be playing and at the championship if you get him going 
he's a very, very good option for you. Like I say, on the counter-attack, if, if Barra kind of sitting in against a, a so-called bigger team or a team that likes to have more of the, the, the ball, then O'Neill will be fantastic. He's also adaptable to, to having a lot of possession. At, at Norwich, we, we normally have in the Championship 60% plus possession. So he, he's used to having both kinds. He does come back and defend really well. Like I say, I remember uh, when we were playing Arsenal in the Premier League a couple of years ago, he was brilliant. That was such a a good defensive display from him and he, he will work his socks off. He's not one of those wingers who will just kind of flounce around and only be active um, as soon as the ball's in the final third. He will work hard for your team and he he, he will die for that badge that, and that's all you want want for your, for your players really to, to come in and really give that desire. Like I say, he's had missed time with this this past season where he had a lot of injuries just couldn't get, in, get into the side because of the likes of Todd Cantwell, Emmy Buende, Kieran Dow we're, we're all keeping him out really and um yeah, it's it's a real shame to see him go because he, he's he's loved here. You'll have a lot of chats for him, I'm sure. Loves Argos. If you got Argos anywhere near you, he absolutely loves Argos. But uh, no, brilliant character. We wish him all the best at Norwich. It would, like I say, key strengths: very, very direct, very quick on his day. Uh, weaknesses sometimes can catch up with himself in terms of he doesn't really know what he's doing with the ball. This intricate dribbling you want. <laughs> Probably not Odell. At times you'll think, wow, how on earth is this kid not playing in the Premier League? And other times you'll be like, ah, OK, I can see why he's, he's not quite cut the grade there because inconsistency can sometimes uh, play against him. But no, he's a brilliant character. I, I can I can see him assisting and scoring quite a few goals at Barrow if, if given that time to build up his match fitness and get going again because Norwich in general has disrupted um, pre-season and Odell definitely has. He's, he's not played in, in the Premier League so far for Norwich, not been on the bench. So uh, yeah, definitely needs game time. Definitely needs that adaptability period, but get the ball out to him quickly. Let him run at the defender. Give him the love that he wants, and he will be brilliant for you. He's he's, he's loved at Cow Road, and he's he's been a very very good uh, very good player for us uh, over a four four year period now, which which has been a long time for Laurie. You know we don't have quite a bit of a turnover with, with certain players, but he he's um, given a really good account of himself. Memorable moments, like I say, Middlesbrough away, Forest at home, go and watch those clips where he scored two, Birmingham away where he scored two, and obviously scored against Ipswich as well, which we absolutely love. But a uh, brilliant character. Hope he does the best for you, and I uh, look forward to seeing how he does. But yeah, if you like this video, make sure you like it, subscribe, comment down below if you're looking forward to getting him. Borough fans, Norwich fans, are we making a mistake in letting him go? I think it's just his time now for me personally, as we've got like through Jolies coming in and, and Rasita as well. They're just ahead of the pecking order for him. But wish him all the best. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.